And in the center, there are also magnetites. What are those magnetites doing there in the center? Remember, that center is mainly calcium uh, carbonate. It is not iron carbonate. And so how do you get these magnetites from calcium carbonate? And we, we argue that you cannot do it. <coughs> they had to be put there. And that is part of the key to our uh, philosophy of how this all goes together. We've done a lot of work <coughs> on the morphology of these little magnetites using some pretty advanced techniques, and I won't get into the details of it, but we're able to do crystallography on them, and these things are only like 50 nanometers, uh, and we, we had to go up to uh, Denver to one of the medical labs and use the uh, tomography system connected to their electron microscope to get these uh, images, and then they're reconstructed by computers. But we think we understand it fairly well, and uh, we also argue that uh, the magnetites produced by our uh, some of our critics uh, are not like the ones that I just showed you. They do not have the elongation. They do not have the, the there's no evidence for the proposed truncated hexa-octahedral geometry that we see in these Allen Hills magnetite. And this is some of their, their uh, published data. David, how similar are these morphologies to the magnetite crystals found, not just in magnetotactic bacteria, but in pigeons, don't they have? Aren't there a couple of organisms that have crystals like that on the Earth? There are other organisms that have uh, nanophase magnetite, and, and uh, uh, Kirschfink has found some in human brains. That and, and the theory is that magnetites in your brains, if properly connected to, your, to the brain cells, may give you a sense of direction uh, that uh, uh, keeps your orientation. And, and certainly carrier pigeons have magnetites in their brains. And they use them, uh, it's been demonstrated that they use them uh, to um, track the magnetic field of the Earth. And that's part of their head. They have other mechanisms. They have multiple mechanisms, uh, apparently, for uh, direction finding, but one of them is these little magnetites. And I think there are probably other animals which are, have not been documented or that I don't know about which also have these magnetites in the brains. So this, the presence of these magnetites on a magnetic planet like the Earth and early Mars is, is really important because it tells us, uh, it tells us that evolution had developed this mechanism for direction and position finding uh, early on, even in very primitive things like bacteria. And furthermore, uh, as Kirschfink uh, uh, argues, the most efficient magnets are not little cubes, they're <coughs> somewhat elongated like bar magnets. Now, magnetite itself is not normally elongated. It, it is only because of the uh, envelope that bacteria produce and force the magnetite to grow within this envelope that uh, bacteria can produce produces elongated bar magnets. And that is important because they're much more effective at, uh, at uh, reacting to the magnetic field. And uh, we argue that the Martian ones have this elongation and the synthetic <coughs> ones do not, or at least they've not been shown to. And I won't, we, we've written like three papers on that and our critics have written three, three or four more papers, but uh, uh, we can, we can uh, I think, show that our data are correct and the, our critics' data are at, at most problematical. Uh, the other point, important point, I don't want to talk about crystallography because that turns off everybody, including us, me, but the, the interesting thing has to do with the chemistry. And the chemistry of these is very critical. It turns out that the chemistry of these little magnetites 
is is highly influenced by the chemistry of what forms them. Uh, there's a term used in biology, you are what you eat. Well, we have another term that you are what you heat. <laughs> because you can form magnetites out of carbonates by heating them. But the chemistry all, always reflects the starting composition of the carbonate. And, and we, have, we have done a lot of work on that, as have others. And we know that at different temperatures, different composition of carbonates will decompose to form magnetite. This shows some of those uh, temperature uh, graphs versus the composition. And you can see that at the very low, lowest temperatures, the iron-rich ones uh, decompose. <coughs> and the higher temperatures, the other ones decompose. If you decompose a carbonate with magnesium in it, you don't get pure magnetite, you get these, these magnesium ferrites. And again, the, you are what you heat. So uh, you cannot get pure iron magnet, magnetite by decomposing an impure carbonate. And that is very critical to our argument, and we consider that fatal to the argument of our critics. Uh, I won't go any more into that. Well, this, this is a cartoon that demonstrates it <coughs> pretty nicely. If, if you heat, heat up on the left a mixed carbonate, uh, what you get on the right is a mixed uh, magnetite or spinels. Once you put a lot of other stuff in them, you don't call them magnetites anymore, you call them spinels. And that's what is illustrated there on the right with iron, magnesium, manganese in it. What you don't get is this on the bottom right, which is a pure iron magnetite. You just, that's never been observed in anybody's experiment that we know of. And that's what our critics uh, are trying to say is, is the cause of our magnetites. All right, I, I don't want to push, push this anymore, uh, but uh, <coughs> this is critical to our argument uh, the origin of these magnetites uh, is, is really um, vital to the whole question of life on Mars. Uh, this is, for those of you who have had already thermodynamics, if you take the composition of carbonates and, and lower the free energy to the lowest energy state, and you can do that by heating it, for example. You get something like this in the lower left corner. Uh, the, the carbonates uh, essentially are only happy when uh, they're either the, the middle blue line there, which is uh, essentially the, the dolomite line, half calcium, half iron magnesium, or the lower right corner, which is iron plus manganese. Compare that, which is the low energy state, to the actual data on Allen Hills, the measured composition on Allen Hills is on the right. It is nothing like the low energy state. The one on the right <coughs> is from Antarctica. It was found out by the Japanese expedition and it probably stayed and lived in Antarctica for uh, a few thousand years. We're not sure how long, maybe 10,000 years. And Yet we see that the features are very similar. They're uh, essentially, they're hollowed out places uh, the size of typical microbes. In many cases, they're partially filled with remains of something, and these remains include some carbon-rich material and some iron oxide-rich material. Uh, and we would argue and, and I'll show you some more pictures, that those are very similar to each other. And in fact, these <coughs> meteorites have about the same, developed at the same time on Mars. We don't know where they came from, but they're both knocklights, and they came to Earth um, uh, from the same area, possibly, on Mars. And at least they were formed on Mars at about the same time. And so we would argue that <coughs> 
if these are truly microfossils, they may represent similar uh, consortia on Mars that formed these things uh, a few hundred million years ago. And there's some elongated forms. Here's the Columbia River basalt. This is a, a, a biologic uh, feature. And then we see a similar thing in Nokla and uh, uh, Yamato 593. Again, seeing these does not prove they're microfossils or biology. But what it does, what it does is, is provide a tracer, a target for additional studies of this, these features and similar features. And we think that eventually we can determine if these are truly biologic or not. So it's important to assemble uh, a lot of these tracers. This is, these are interpreted uh, to be uh, Archean uh, 3.4, 3.5 billion year old microfossils from Australia by uh, Frances Westhall and, and her friends. And uh, <coughs> what we argue is that there are morph morphologically some very similar things in both uh, Nakla and Yamato 593 and uh, Columbia River basalts. We're pretty certain that these are true biologic uh, features on the left. Uh, little bit of a, a biofilm there. We don't quite know uh, what that, whether that's indigenous or not. It's in Nokla. And uh, Yamato, Yamato has an uh, indication of a biofilm as well. Uh, again, these, are, these little bumps are found in both meteorites, and they're, they're rather similar. Keep in mind that this is, these are two totally different terrestrial environments. They're, Antarctica on the ice and Egypt in the, the mud paddies collected within weeks, days, a few years. Uh, just a few more comparisons here. Uh, these are quite common if, as we look in these two meteorites. If we look carefully, we see these things all over the place. These are not just rare little uh, things we happen upon. Uh, I can find these in almost any chip you give, give, give me of either one of these meteorites. Uh, just uh, some more comparisons. Uh, Storrs Lake in, in the Bahamas, these are recent uh, microbial forms. On the left is uh, uh, some of the microbes uh, in the carbonate sediments of Storrs Lake. Uh, on the left, uh, uh, recent ones on the right are Yamato, Yamato 593, uh, the Mars meteorite from uh, Antarctica. Uh, Storrs Lake and, and Yamato again. And, and we, have, we have chemistry on a lot of these. I, I didn't want to get into the chemistry, but we can show that there are uh, interesting distinguishing features about the, these Yamato uh, biomorphs that match the Storrs Lake ones. Uh, back to Nakla showing that how some of these uh, features which may be, uh, which we call biomorphs now, I won't say that they're fossils, but the point is that these are not late contamination that just laid around here. These are built into the rock. They have become part of the rock. They have recrystallized. <coughs> they are turned into oxides and they're uh, welded or embedded in the rock itself. And the rock, everyone agrees, is, is, uh, is from uh, Mars and the people will s accept that that rock there is from Mars but they won't accept that any of these features you see on it are from Mars. So I, I think there's a problem there. Uh, Nakla, uh, again, some more Archean fossils, known fossils from uh, Australia. 